Hajime, welcome back to Comic Jutsu. JT McRoberts here with you once again. And today we're going to bring you a very special unboxing as we unveil issue number one of Heavy Metal Magazine. The crowd goes wild. What you see in front of you is actually, I believe, issue three, cover date June 1977. This is the earliest, well, up until now, this is the earliest issue of the Heavy Metal Magazine publication that I own. Featuring a classic cover there by Webius. I have been trying to get my hands on a copy of issue one of Heavy Metal Magazine for many, many, many years. And I recently came across a lot online that was part of an auction sale and basically wound up getting issue one, two, and four for about what one would pay for issue one. So I'm super thrilled. Here we have the box. And the prize hidden inside. It's almost like an Easter egg hunt, isn't it? There you can see those gems peeking through. There on the top we see July 1977. I think this is issue 4. May 1977. I don't want to dox this guy, but it still has his name there on the cover. So wherever you are, L. Mark Lydell, Comic Jutsu salutes you. And there it is. Issue 1. Cover date April 1977. I've never read the contents. I haven't read it up till now. I've had these this box setting to the side uh, for pretty much since the start of the year. Just waiting for a time when I could get back to my regular schedule of uploading videos from the people who bring you the National Lampoon Heavy Metal Magazine, the adult illustrated fantasy magazine. In my youth, Heavy Metal, the magazine, represented just the best in transgressive speculative fiction. It was science fiction, it was fantasy, it was surrealism, it was art with a capital A. I love the robot with boobs smashing the man. Highly relevant today in today's anti-male society. Retailers see page one for special display allowance plan. Featuring an excerpt from the biggest epic fantasy of the 70s, The Sword of Shannara, which I actually did read at the time. Read it slowly. Okay, so there's just a tad bit of water damage. It's not horrible, though. Okay, so I've got a little bit of crinkling on the upper part of the pages. Here we go, the contents. Den by Corbin. Recently released uh, in brand new collections, hardcover collection from Dark Horse. Root by Drillet. Conquering Armies by Dionet and Gal. The Adventures of Eurus by Drillette and Alexis. Somebody actually, I think, re recommended that. Here we have the beginning of Arzok by Moebius. We have excerpt of the Sword of Shannara. So on and so forth. Front cover by Nicolette. Back cover by Drillette. Oh, there we go. Philippe Drillette. Fantastic stuff. Great coloring there. Now, this is not going to be uh, so much an issue-by-issue issue flip through. Let's save that for another video. It's just an unboxing just to share my enthusiasm. Dan, it would be interesting to, uh, well, interesting for me anyway, to compare uh, these this original printing, or rather a reprint, because my understanding is that the majority of this content was produced in Metal Arlant, before it was repackaged for um, American audiences in Heavy Metal Magazine. I have to cover up the Richard Corbin swinging cock of doom so my, my channel doesn't get flagged even further than it is. What amazing coloring here. I don't know. I've done a couple of these um, 
these uh, videos before where I compared the original prints to the reprints and nobody's too terribly interested in them. Uh, here's Philippe Droulette. So I've got a little bit of crinkling here at the bottom, but I'm okay with that. I mean, I'll, I'll take books of reader copy quality. This is slightly above reader copy. I mean, the pages are still in, in pretty good condition. It's not falling apart. You know, it's got a couple bumps and dents here and there. This is all Philippe Drillette. Just fascinating stuff. I mean, the contents of these these magazines are just magical to me. They just they just represent, as Grant Morrison might say, pure molten imagination on the page. Look at this stuff. For fans of you artist edition books out there these black and white pages are absolutely gorgeous voyage beyond the boundaries of your dreams absolutely the best i could do as a kid was just like sneak a look at heavy metal magazine it was always hidden at the back of the magazine rack you know, I would wait till no one was looking. There were no adults keeping watch. I would grab it, flip through it, have my little mind melted, and then head back out into the world. This is fantastic stuff. That's pretty much going to be my only commentary. This is gorgeous. This is beautiful. Look at this draftsmanship. This too is amazing. Ah, here's Arzak by Moebius. Just pure storytelling. It was Alfred Hitchcock who said that cinema is that I'm I'm butchering the quote that uh, the chase scene is the purest form of cinema. So here you go. We have the purest form of cartooning, sequential illustration, whatever you want to call it. Just a flow of action, no dialogue, no caption boxes. You know regurgitating exposition onto the page it's just pure experience following having your mood manipulated by the color scheme amazing stuff it really forces you to be really tight with your storytelling not much I can do to cover all these boobies on the page, but what can you do? There's an excerpt from Sword of Shannara. I always love the Brothers Hildebrandt artwork for that. I mean, the cover artwork was absolutely fascinating. It's a shame that um, that nowadays with the the reprints of those old books that they don't that they don't pay the artists to uh, use these fantastic works because because they're still out there. And unfortunately, it's only going to get worse because now AI art is here and they can just say, hey, give me a sort of Shinar cover like the Brothers Hildebrandt and it'll just recreate the same picture. And somebody who pushed a button will tell you what a great job that they did. They never had to set up a camera, take a photo reference, get their dramatic lighting properly, never had to figure out the coloring. Never had to compose it within the frame. Just a few words, all done. The ultimate artist tool. The ultimate editor tool, actually. Editors have always claimed to be the true creators of anything creative. They can tell you, yeah, go give me a story with a bunch of guys that go to the moon, find alien insects inside it. But they can't actually tell you that story. They can't create that rhythm. They can't create that flow. They can't manipulate the reader's action, the, the reader's emotions through the story. This is all just great stuff. I've never flipped through this before, so apparently it is going to be a flip through <laughs> of some sort. But there you go. If you've always wanted to see issue one of Heavy Metal Magazine, there it is. Back cover by Philippe Droulette. May. The issue of June that I already had. 
and then July with the uh, another Moebius Arzak cover. Hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends about it. Leave me some comments below. Perhaps you want to see a flip through of one of these other early issues of Heavy Metal Magazine. From one collector to you, JT McRoberts, thank you for watching. Mate.